Thank you very much, um, uh, friends from uh, South Africa. I'm very pleased uh, to be with you, uh, with the Af South African actual community. Uh, Ronald Richmond approached me about uh, a month ago to talk about uh, uh, the role of actuaries. And actually the title I agree with him was a much wider issue. And he was, he was keen that I talk about the role of actuaries in, in a context of our strategy, which is uh, BSMD, vision, skill set, mindsets and domains, with particular reference to sustainability and the social impact issues of our time. So I have only 15 minutes and I intend to uh, stick to that. So I will cut to the chase. Uh, what is uh, the role of actuaries uh, in society? Uh, on a technical one, I think there's less debate that we could provide sound calculations, we comply with our legal requirements and give advice. Yeah. But I think the issue which is before us is whether we have a public interest role uh, which we speak to uh, in a more in a stronger way, uh, in a more advocacy way. Uh, and that is uh, not something uh, we are good at, not something we are good at. Uh, the, the issue of uh, climate change has been there for the for longest of times in the next last three or five years. Uh, but the Council of IFOA in June uh, approved uh, a cap a climate-related risk uh, report, uh, which talks about supporting our members, uh, supporting our members um, uh, in understanding climate change, uh, and also self-guided competency frameworks, uh, and as well as uh, working with the practice boards uh, to see how this could be incorporated in our thinking. And all these are good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. But it also begs the question uh, whether we need to be faster uh, and not be so behind the curve uh, in terms of uh, changes, changes around the world, whether we can find our voice to speak up. Uh, so it's that context, right? So, so today, even as of today, tomorrow the council is meeting uh, as well as on Wednesday, uh, whether we should have a position of committing IFOA as an institution uh, to be a net zero uh, emitter of carbon uh, by say 2030. And that will be a very concrete achievement. And whether we oblige our individual actuaries uh, that it is within their professional requirement that they should speak up in investment communities and investment allocation. So those are concrete changes. And I'm for, not for one moment, I can say that all of us are convergent as to our role, uh, but I think all of us agree that we have a public interest role, but how that public interest role is expressed uh, is often uh, a point for debate. Uh, if you look back in the last 15 years, 30 years or 50 years, yeah, uh, whether we are good in improving the systems we have or whether we are bold enough to suggest uh, changes to the system because the system is not working. And this issue is no longer just about climate change. Yeah? Uh, it's about a whole range of issues which come to our foreground. Uh, the pandemic is one of them. Uh, it changes all our mindsets. Uh, climate change has, is shouting out at us uh, even before the pandemic came. And you will remember the bushfires the droughts, the hurricanes, and the melting of the polar caps. Uh, polar caps, yeah. And of course, the world is also changing because uh, whether our financial system uh, is measuring the risk uh, and delivering uh, the value to our customers uh, is increasingly debated. Yeah, it's increasingly debated whether our financial system is really sustainable and doing its work. Uh, for our customers, and do we have a role in that? Yeah, I think all of us are also careful uh, because we, we don't have the answers. We have the technical tools, uh, but our technical tools sometimes also require us to do a bit more. 
uh, some of you uh, may remember uh, something called capital units yeah, in investment linked products, which is a way where we camouflage uh, the high, the high uh, charges we have uh, in the first two years. That is technically an uh, interesting innovation, but whether it serves the public, uh, I think it's more open to debate. Yeah? Uh, where are our roles in this? I, I think the zeitgeist has changed. Uh, so when we introduced the uh, capital risk report, it was pushing an open door uh, in June. And the leadership team in IFOA felt in the last two weeks that we probably should do more, hence the debate uh, tomorrow uh, and on, uh, and on uh, Wednesday. And, and of course, the zeitgeist has changed. Bank of England, uh, I just looked up the website yesterday, and they're full of guidance and reports and consultants, uh, consultation about it. Uh, I think Mark Carney led the way. And also there are many questions asked by Mervyn King in, in his book, Radical Uncertainty. So having as a, ha having that set as a back, uh, uh, backdrop, uh, I have about eight and a half minutes to see how it fits uh, into our history and our strategy. Uh, and I think it fits quite well uh, in terms of the way it emerges. Yeah. So we are in a VUCA environment. I think all of us know this is the first time we have a felt global uncertainty. If you tell me eight months ago or nine months ago that I will never travel to the UK uh, this year, or maybe in my entire duration of my presidency, I would say that, what, how would that happen? Of course, it may happen. I still hope to go back to UK uh, in, in March. Uh, at the earliest, yeah, it's already not going to happen before March. But that is the felt VUCA. But the inspiration for our strategy of VSMD was not about pandemics, but, and it was not about social purpose, and it's not about sustainability. It was to make sure that our actuaries continue to be relevant, uh, influential, and impactful in their workplace. That was the basis on which I ran for my presidency in 2019, because I was concerned that we are not venturing out enough, quickly enough to embrace data science and machine learning and to be multidisciplinary in approach. And our lives are lengthening and we have to have a continuous mindset. That argument is won uh, and, and the council is very supportive of it. So we want it to be relevant, influential, impactful and workplace. But the arguments for sustainability and making a difference in society came much later on. Do we have a role uh, as the VSD, VSMD argument was developing in a wider world? And of course, we do have a, a, a role, yeah, and it, and it goes uh, into the skill sets and the mindsets of the profession, right? So I wouldn't uh, uh, talk about that uh, 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 at this moment, but to just to give you uh, a sense of why it was not just about skill sets in terms of uh, uh, learning about data science, yeah, because it's not about going to learn data science which will ensure a future is having the right mindset of adaptability, of curiosity, uh, and of the growth mindset, which is about experimentation and so forth. And it's not about the quintessential values of accuracy and consistency, which are still very important strengths, but those strengths are not very helpful in a digital world. Yeah? So with that, I would say that, uh, so when Reddington say that uh, we shouldn't be uh, be surrounded by our besetting virtues uh, and create room for new values or new virtues like imagination as well as impulse. And by impulse, he meant uh, gut instinct. He was really spot on. Yeah. So with that, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't go into this right now uh, because that was the basis on having a curious mindset and an adaptive mindset. So what we need to survive in the digital world is an innovative mindset, right? Uh, and, and there's sufficient literature about the need to have innovative or entrepreneurial mindset. It is about design thinking. It is about um, Montessori type thinking. It is about whole brain thinking to supplement uh, our systematic mindset of accuracy, consistency, uh, reticence and cautiousness. Because a systematic mindset, which we are very strong on, is still important. So what we are looking for is a diversity of mindsets. And in the last five minutes, I will go into what mindset do we require to tackle the big uncertainty, uh, uncertainty issues of our time. 
I, I was very fascinated uh, by one of our leading politicians in Singapore, Taman Shagmukaratnam, who talks about the risk in the world, which is about climate change, uh, about income security, about uh, health security, uh, about um, uh, education, uh, about uh, uh, and also about the efficacy of our financial system and obviously uh, the breakdown in East-West relationships uh, when Trump came into power. And all these are big risks. And when he named all those risks in the insurance conference, he said that insurance, insurers and actuaries uh, are actually at the fulcrum in many of these risks and we do have a role to play. So, so if we call ourselves risk professionals, and we do call ourselves risk professionals, yeah? uh, then our work is not just about modeling, although that is very important uh, and producing the right results. Our work is actually to produce sustainable systems. Yeah? If our risk models sit on systems we are not sustainable, I think there is an obligation for us because of our public interest requirement for us to speak out. How we speak out, I think is going to be important. So the sources of uncertainty uh, what kind of values do we need? Uh, I think we, uh, we need imagination, uh, as Reddington said. We need courage. We need courage, as uh, Ronnie Bowie said in his presidential address. But in many of this, we need judgment. It's not blind courage and reckless imagination, but judgment uh, in the midst of uncertainty is required. And all the problems we are talking today, whether it's climate risk, economic inequality, uh, or the efficacy of our financial system, are systemic problems, yeah? are systematic, because the, the system is not the right system. Whether we are good in changing systems, uh, there's very little evidence to support that in the last 25 years, yeah? uh, especially after the Morris Review. We, we have went in to be more technical and to improve our system. I like to call our actuaries to come out because now the requirement for judgment, courage, and imagination to alter the system, to, to, to offer alternative orthodoxies because the current orthodoxy is not working and the events for the last six months is required, so, uh, have shown us that. So we are talking about systematic mindsets, uh, which are our traditional uh, strength, um, the innovative mindset for digital and the systemic mindset. But let me tell you, if you go far back in our history, in the day of Reddington, in the day of Pascal, Fermat, Haley, they were figuring out uncertainty in their time and they came out with risk models and probabilities. Yeah? So they were big systems builders, yeah? big systems builders. And systems can be built. We built pension system, we built big profit system, and of course, uh, we were slow in embracing the advances of financial economics. Yeah, so so there were so, but I think there's a time for us to come up. I was going to tell you about a group which I was involved in about the actuaries for transformational change, and we're thinking about three main lines about economics. Is our economic system serving us? Are we doing uh, enough as risk professional to make sure that the systems we rest on are sustainable, uh, and whether we are thinking systemically enough. We are often thinking systematically, but that is not what is required. What we require is to think systemically. Yeah. Uh, so in the time, uh, so I would say that uh, in the context of climate risk, I'm very pleased to see uh, the distinguished uh, three um, actuaries who are going to speak after me, and I will stay for a short while. But clearly, uh, there needs to be more courage uh, in speaking up. But we have to also bring people along. Uh, because there are many diverse views and there are many who feel that we shouldn't comment on many of the social impact issues uh, which we find ourselves in. So, so um, I, I think the time will come where we probably need uh, more wisdom and judgment in our work. Uh, models are important, compliance are important, but we got to stand back a bit and look where the ship is sailing, huh? rather than trying to polish the deck and improve the machinery in the ship. Should we be on the ship? Is that the right ship? Is that the journey is correct? So I think, uh, so the elevation uh, of thought leadership uh, in, a, in our profession is something which I'm passionate about. Uh, not just I, there are many people in the profession who are keen to do this. 
I think it is a good inflection point uh, to go through. So I believe that my 15 minutes is up. So I wish all of you a, a very good two hours uh, in discussion. I, I hope I, I set a context from my perspective. Uh, I, I speak as a person uh, and also as a president, but clearly we are going through uh, many decision-making points. Uh, it's an important period uh, for the profession. Uh, thank you.